Hello dear viewer. Today I'll share my project for capturing pictures of trains, trains that go over a bridge in view of my apartment. With COVID lockdowns, moving to a new city, I had extra time and opportunity to start something new. I was inspired by an article about Jaco Gilbert's project where at the time the rent in Toronto was too high. Condos were purchased and used as investment vehicles and were left sitting empty, which made housing even more scarce in Toronto. Jaco set up a camera to watch more than a thousand units in 15 buildings at night taking photos every five minutes from sunset to sunrise over a week. Using heat maps, he overlaid images to get a snapshot of light patterns that he believes are a good measure if anyone lives in the unit. Jacko's results suggest 5.6% of units he watched were unoccupied. Using a camera, Jacko is able to learn something about his environment. The potential to set up a camera and learn something about my environment was exciting. Outside my window, I did not have many high rises, but I had trains crossing a bridge. The trains travel day and night. You usually feel them before you see them through the vibrations in the floor. Thousands of carts cross the bridge every day. There are many different types of carts. Box carts, auto carts, passenger carts, hopper carts, tank carts, locomotives and shipping container carts. The tray carts on the bridge were quite far away from my window, so I acquired a telephoto zoom lens to be able to see them in higher detail. Here's a closer view in person of the bridge and the train carts moving across it. For my apartment, we switched to the telephoto zoom lens perspective. The problem with the video feed is that it's too much. Too much for me to analyze each cart individually. I needed pictures of each cart instead. Waiting with my camera all day to take pictures of each cart was too manual. I had other responsibilities. Is it possible to automate the picture taking of the train carts during the entire day? For this, I needed a mechanism that could detect when a train cart is on the bridge and in view of my telephoto zoom lens. When such a condition is met, the mechanism must make the camera take a picture. The mechanism I used here was TensorFlow, which is an open source platform for machine learning. You're looking at a video of TensorFlow-based cell phone app used for detecting coins. I used such an app and modified it to my context. I trained a machine learning model to detect train carts instead of coins and added additional features that I needed. Let's take a closer look. Here's a screen recording from the phone of the application detecting the trains. The application is very computationally intensive, so the screen recording unfortunately slows things down significantly from the app's usual speed. The cell phone's camera is aimed at the bridge where the train carts are crossing. The video frames are processed in real time by a TensorFlow model that for each frame outputs where it thinks the train carts are. This estimate is represented by the boxes on the screen. The vertical red and yellow lines are for aiming and line up with the telephoto zoom's lens's perspective. Once a train cart is between the red and yellow line, the cell phone application sends out a signal for the lens to take a picture. The information in blue in the top left is for monitoring purposes in case something is wrong with the app. The Android phone was set up at the window plugged into a charger and with a cooling fan attached due to the intense computations. The picture command is sent via Bluetooth to a Raspberry Pi that acts as a middleman between the cell phone and telephoto zoom lens. Once the Raspberry Pi receives the Bluetooth signal, it forwards the signal via cable to the camera. Now this was the complete contraption with which I could now take pictures of trains. Most importantly, the mechanism is automatic. I don't have to be at home for it to work. It can work all day long. Developing and setting up the contraption took me some time during which I'd observed that most train carts are boring. The most interesting ones are the ones with graffiti. The ones with graffiti are usually the box, hopper, auto cart types. I modified the code to only take pictures of those. During a single day, hundreds of pictures could be taken with the SD card filling up fast. I had to write a web application to help me sort through all the pictures to remove the boring ones and to tag the interesting ones. Most of them ended up boring, but I managed to collect 2,000 pictures that I consider interesting. Let's take a look at some.
One neat thing I observed is the same artist tagging multiple carts. The tagging web application I created was helpful in observing these patterns. I won't go into these observations in this video to keep it short. I am thinking of showcasing some of these results later on. In conclusion, I'd like to mention what I learned during this project. First, I learned a bit about trains. Most interesting to me is the graffiti. I used to have a more negative view of it, but now after seeing the effort many put into graffiti, I have more respect for it. I'm more attentive to graffiti around me in the concrete jungle that I live in. A local artist where I live is Bader. He sprays everywhere he can. I'm grateful for having captured all this unique graffiti. I wonder what graffiti will look like in the future. Will people still spray in the future? The pictures serve as an archive and a time capsule of what graffiti looks like now. Second, I learned a lot of new technologies that help realize this dream of creating an automatic picture taker. I learned TensorFlow, Android app development, simple online real-time tracking, React, and more. I've spent significant effort making sure the code I wrote and used for this project is available for others to use and observe. See the description of this video for more detail. Third, I learned a bit about endurance. This project took a year and a half to glue together in between my various responsibilities. Progress was slow and steady. There are many big milestones that were big breakthroughs for me before which I had questions if my project was even feasible. For example, until I purchased the telephoto zoom lens and unboxed it, I wasn't sure if my pictures would be detailed enough. Or, until I figured out how to get the Android cell phone app to send a Bluetooth signal via Raspberry Pi to the camera, I wasn't sure if automation was possible. Another example is spending a month brushing up on numerical linear algebra in order to write my simple online real-time tracker. Perhaps the biggest milestone was training a TensorFlow model capable of detecting trains. TensorFlow took some time to wrestle with to figure out how it works. I am grateful for the opportunity to have built this. I wonder what other things and tasks I can automate in the future. What things are there outside your window that can be captured and information extracted from? As for my window and apartment, the lease was extended another year to wrap this project up. I am happy it has come to an end as the rent, like in Toronto, is too high.